like we are uh, live. So, so um, Pepper's Bar. Pepper's Bar is my personal attempt to create a place where we meet and get to know the man, uh, the person, the individual, and um, something special. I don't know if I can make it, but I want to give a try. And um, tonight uh, we have Tristan, Tristan Lombard. Tristan, thanks so much oh. for. Ching Ching. Ching Ching. Thanks so much for being there. I was, uh, I, I, I really, I, I'm, um, you are the first one here. So for me, it's, it's um, you know, it's uh, even on earth. So thanks so much. So, um, my dear, um, so being on a first date, what would be the best way to get your attention and sympathy? Oh, okay. I love this because you did not send me any of these questions in advance. So for anyone in this recording, <laughs> you're getting honest answers. What's the best way to get my attention on a first date? Oh, man. Well, um, if it was a first date and you know me, I'm very careful and calculated in who I would have on a first date. I will say to scoot out of this and thinking about Jose in your bar, right? Pepe's bar, if you will. Um, I am more interested in when I'm at a bar, you know, I'm usually reading a book, to be quite honest. <laughs> I, I I like loud noise. Um, I, I love to hear like Rihanna bumping very loudly and read. And so whenever I have a book, you know, um, currently I'm reading Accelerating Nonprofit Impact um, in Salesforce with, uh, it's by Melissa D. She's amazing. Um, I'm reading that book right now. And I'm also um, reading this book, which is a sequel uh, by Liz Fallen and Molly, um, Big Feelings, How to Be Okay When Things Are Not Okay. So I like to mix and match. Um, you would have to pry me out of my book <laughs> okay. at a bar. You would have to pry me out of my book at a bar um, to get my attention. Um, if I was at a bar and I was practicing my, what I call florography, it's basically where um, I'm, a, I'm a salsa dancer. I used to be a competitive swing dancer back in my undergrad at Berkeley. Um, but at the end of the day, I know how to make moves happen on the floor. So you would have to impress me with your dance skills. Oh, dance. I mean, I thought, I can tell you, I thought that I could dance. Okay, mm. I thought that, yeah. And then I, um, um, uh, oh my God, I, I saw uh, people dancing, really uh, nice dancing. And I thought, oh my God, I cannot dance. There are people who really have a lot of uh, movement. And, and then uh, you say, okay, um, there's no way. So you cannot, uh, you cannot get that. But I, I'm, a good, I am, I'm a good dancer, but I know there are many people outside that they are better dancers than me. There's only one. But I don't care. Exactly. That, that's the energy, Jose. That's the energy. That, I, I don't care. So that, that, that's the point. So what, what, what do you think? That, what are the no-goes in a bar? Mm. Well, I have five sisters. I okay. have five sisters, and um, you don't have to have five sisters to know that there is a certain decorum in a bar. Um, so I think for me, I always say, what, what is that quote from, um, from Spice Girls? If you want to be my lover, best get with my friends. I know, and to anyone who's watching this, I have no apologies because I can't sing and I don't care, to your point. Um, so if you can treat my friends right that I'm with, that's that's where it's at. I think that's the biggest thing, how you treat. And also, for all y'all on a date, if you're ever on a first date and you planned it as a recovering social worker who also had to do fine dining on the side, serving $18 glasses of caratuli from the St. Lucian Highlands to Karen, and then getting on my bicycle to the Tenderloin of San Francisco, what I learned was on your first date, see how they treat the server. Because how they treat the server, that is going to be everything for you to yes. learn. Mm -hmm. and, and if they get the bill, if they get the bill and they don't tip 20%, standard in America, they don't tip 20%, run away. 
Yes. Well, I'm, I, I don't know. You, I, I'm sure you don't know that. Uh, I'm, I've, um, I work two and a half years in a bar, in a bar discotheque. So I, and, and one thing that you, um, that you know, it's you have to behave, behave, mm. and you need to behave. And if you behave, I think you, you go through. But, but that, that, that's the point. Tell me your favorite cocktail. Well, I, I, I'm not a, a cocktail guy, but, but, but if, if you have to. then maybe, um, I, I mean, I, in, 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 I have to tell you when, um, at the beginning, when I was young, I didn't have enough money. So I drank beer, yeah. just beer. And, and then at, at some point in the night, I have to decide if I drink one more beer or if I take a taxi home. At some point, I, or then I take the money for the bus. And at some point, I have to walk home. So that's, that's my... <laughs> and nowadays, getting, getting older, uh, uh, I'm drinking wine, especially We're from Spain. We're all getting older, ching ching. And ching, we ching, love it. Ching, ching. And we love it. So... Um, Tell me your kind of wine. Sorry? Tell me your favorite wine. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm from Spain and normally I drink wine from Spain and I drink from Ribera del Duero. Mm -hmm. And there are um, some of them, they are nice, there are different price categories. And, um, and if you go to the Agile Testing Days uh, um, Speaker's Dinner in Germany, uh, the wine that we serve there, I look for that wine. And normally it's the wine that I have at home. And this mm. wine, for example, this, maybe this is also from the giant testing days because some the bottles that are left, I take it home and I let in the see. office and and with the with the with colleagues we, we drink wine. So that's that's nice. I love that. So in in the end, my Spanish is very mad. Prefuse uso uso mi mi manos y señas mucho, pero mi padre is on vivin un punto verde de Galicia. Ah, okay. That's very nice because in, in the north, um, um, I mean, the food is, is, is amazing there because you have, have a lot of seafood and so on. And they have very nice white wine there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, so if you are there, let me know. I can give you some, some hints. Okay. So, but let's go a little bit about you. Let's talk about you. Um, I, I read on Twitter someone calling you a friendship catalyst. What happens around him is magic. Do you feel like that too? Are you a magician? <laughs> Shout out to my Federico Toledo, who I just encanto mucho. Um, Fetty, for anyone who doesn't know, is the COO and founder, co founder at Abstracta. And he's been a friend of mine for a while. You know, Oren Rubin, who's also my boo boo, um, who's the founder and CEO at Testem, uh, where I worked before he introduced me to him and we i just i love that human um to answer your question yeah yeah i think that you know i i get this all the time people are like why are you always making friends and i'm like i can't help myself nor do i want to and people ask me why are you being so kind to me there's people that put up their walls and i say it's love it's that simple. TLDR, it's love. It's always that, you know, I, um, I'm a firm believer. This is not my first time on this planet. Um, I couldn't say that I'm a bruja, <laughs> but, <laughs> pero, pero en español, but pero son un, un uh, bruja de bueno or whatever. I'm a, I'm a good witch, but it's not my first time on this planet. And I genuinely believe that this time on this planet was to be in the service of others. And I've learned so much from years of working with homeless youth in San Francisco and the Tenderloin, uh, the 60 plus caseload, you know, attempted arson, race riots, police brutality, meth, all of it. I've seen I've seen humanity at every state. And I've also seen that in my own upbringing, um, being a homeless youth myself, you know, I've seen humanity in every state. and. Um, I have never, never lost my faith. People are like, how do you do what you do, Tristan? And I'm like, well, I call it my three C's for community. I'm like, caffeine. <laughs> Thank you, Federico. I love my yerba mate. I go, caffeine. And then I say, you know, 
concealer. <laughs> and then I go lastly, and I go, and Christ. <laughs> and people are like, oh, and I'm like, but you weren't expecting that, were you? But it goes back to people and it goes back to, it's love. It's love. And when you love people, it shows, it's palpable. So am I a magician? It's just love. Okay. So are you a believer? In what? I mean, you, you have a, I don't know how do you call this in, in English. So you have the, 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 uh, the, the cross and, and, and yeah. do you, do you pray? Oh, I'm a cashew. I'm a Catholic Jew. I made that up. <laughs> so uh, half my family's in Israel and I do some of the Jewish traditions, but no, okay. I mean, I, I do, I do, I do pray. I pray every morning and I pray every night, Monday through Friday. And on the weekends, I'm like, Jesus, take the wheel, <laughs> you know, but I think regardless of whether you pray, you know, I also have my crystals. I've got my, you know, my sage that I burn when I'm having conversations with customers or having a hard time or anyone. Um, yeah, I totally, I totally pray. But you don't need to believe in a higher power to pray. You can pray to yourself. You can, you know, and that's in prayer. Prayer isn't just about, you know, the rituals. Prayer is the belief in a bigger, something bigger than yourself. And for me, it's always been those connections with other people and how we're all connected. So at the end of the day, whoever you pray to, um, it's important to lead with intention every morning and have that same ritual at night. I'm a firm believer in rituals. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So um, <clears throat> I, I always uh, said that uh, we are, the result of our childhood mm -hmm. myself yourself everybody and um, right. we all carry uh, packages with us. sometimes we can put mm -hmm. them away sometimes we can carry them but we know we have them okay mm. that, that's that's life and and we see it uh, quite extremely at the jaltas and days because we um i don't know how we make it I, I don't know how we made it from the first time, but we yeah. offer um, a quite safe place, um, a really safe place where people can, um, without hesitation, just to say, okay, you know, I have a, this patch here and it's quite strong and um, and I want to talk about that. And and um, you have, we have had people talking about things, of their life in front of 600 people there. Trauma. And um, it's, 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 it's really um, amazing. It's really um, uh, very nice. And um, so how was your childhood? <laughs> oh, man. How much time do you have? Um, My life. Yeah, it's real. It's real. You know, um, I'm very, very vocal about my childhood um, because it's not people. People think that it's that I haven't processed it. And, you know, I always tell people, look, you never get over trauma. You learn how to positively integrate it into your life or you don't. And there are ebbs and there are flows, there are valleys and there are mountains. The bottom line is you can't do it alone. Um, I tell everyone, I'm like, look, I grew up poor white trash, you know, poor white trash, dirt roads, um, 101 acres, um, pulling sheep out of sheep, riding cows as horses, had a single mom who did the best that she could, um, eight kids. And um it was severely abusive. It was severely abusive. You know, I'm a survivor of childhood, you know, sexual molestation, physical abuse, uh, um, just a lot, you know, and I was kicked out of the house when I was 13, taking <clears throat> care of my siblings. I was protecting them. I took a lot of the physical blows um, and I, you know, bounced around between group homes, was homeless. Uh, you know, and I watched in the group homes, I watched how my black and brown friends went off 
through the system and went into juvie, which is like a childhood prison system, if you will. And I didn't. And I saw the reasons why. And I told myself after I got emancipated and after I got into um, it was a it was a cousin and his husband who took me in and let me finish up at my fourth high school in L.A. And I got into Berkeley um, barely at 17 and I just went off and I went there and, um, you know, it, it wasn't without the women in my life. And that's why I'm so passionate about women, because women raised me and, and it was a lot of different women. Um, oh but I never lost my faith. I never lost my faith. And for, I don't want anyone from here to think that I'm here to like proselytize. I'm not. I just I never lost my faith. I never had a Job moment and I don't judge anyone who has. Um, but I never lost my faith. Um, I didn't have a childhood. You know, we were supposed to wake up in the morning, five years old, work in the field. And every year you got a year older, you had to work out in the field. Um, I think my mom, I think my mom <laughs> expedited a few of my years. But, you know, it took me it took me 12 years of not talking to my mom to forgive her. Because for anyone who's experienced trauma from a family member, specifically a parent, um, anger i think that anger can be useful in the short term because it can it can drive you maybe you have a po and you're just like oh i'm just going to do this for them you know like i'm going to get through this but eventually if you carry your anger it metastasizes it becomes this malignant emotional tumor that then you carry and you have to let that mental real estate go and you have to forgive on your terms um but yeah it's a long way to say childhood yeah i mean my childhood was um um, mm. um let's say in that way was strong it was not easy yeah yeah but uh, maybe compares to yours i was in in um, a kingdom of of i don't know there's no comparison there's just yeah, there's no comparison but um and the link that we have and we may uh, need to talk about that when we are alone is yeah. um that i um, i rise up also with uh, women and i am a strong believer of women and i support women and and i love them and i um, want them to go uh, forward because um, i have seen that they have a lot of powers and uh, um, and uh, for example, the whole thing. But but it's something that we need to talk maybe in, in another place because it, it takes a lot of time. And um, well, if you we see, will. If, yeah, we will. If you see at uh, the Jal testing days, we are pushing as much as we uh, as we can, and it's always a fight to get more and more inside. And and um, let's see how we can make it better. But maybe you you are a helper on on that too. What I have seen in my in. <laughs> what I've seen in my life is that um, even especially when when you are coming from um, difficult circumstances, yeah, and you you get some some person that you believe in that, that impress you and um, uh, that leads you. And um, how was you in who, who were they in your life? Mm -hmm. There are special ones. Who, who were the people that, the special ones that helped me? Um, there were quite a few different group homes and I learned a lot. Um, you know, I think the one that really made the biggest difference to me was when I got to Berkeley and I was invited to be a part of this program for former foster and emancipated youth. And this woman, Deborah Lowe Martinez, who I still talk to to this day, and I just love her. Um, she was running the program and I had all my guards up. I didn't believe any of this. They were like, oh, and, and Michelle Niffen, who founded this program, they reached out. Michelle Niffen was like, hey, you know, we have this program for people like yourself at Berkeley, you know, because, you know, people people come in during the, the welcome week and all the parents are moving them in. And it was just me. 
and everyone's going out to dinner and I was like, and they reached to me before and they were like, Hey, you can get a registry at Bed Bath & Beyond, all of this. I reported them. <laughs> I reported them as scam, as a scam. You know, I was like, nope, they shouldn't have my contact information. I reported them to University of Berkeley. I was like, no, this is terrible. Y'all should not be doing this. And they're like, no, Tristan, it's real. <laughs> but when you have so many guards, and you are in survival, you know, survival sex, money, like as a kid, you have all those walls. And I think that they help me take so many of those walls down. They help me see that vulnerability is a strength um, and to accept love because it's so hard when you come from so much trauma, so much disappointment, so many letdowns, so many people promising you things, but not delivering, whether it's a social worker, whether it's a parent, um, you put up all the walls to protect yourself as a kid because you have to protect your younger siblings too. And they just taught me all of that. And when I told them I wanted to do drag on the side, cause I think drag is fun. Like I don't do it like at a bar or whatever, you know, like, and I love everyone who has, you know, I save it more when I'm trolling Richard Bradshaw, Richard Bradshaw, if you're watching this, Tell us your favorite Dolly Parton song, Richard. Um, you know, like, can I dress up in drag in front of a thousand people? I don't care. But they taught me that. You know, um, there's a quote by Nathaniel Hawthorne from the Scarlet Letter that I always quote because I love it. Be true, be true, be true. Show freely to the world your worst trait. Let the worst trait be inferred. And I always say, look, I'm not telling you to be your worst, but I am telling you to, to be true and be you. Um, and those those women taught me that they really did at 17. They really did. And um, still being a one man gay pride parade to this day. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So, Tristan, what do you uh, do for a living? Mm. So I tell everyone again, recovering social worker and everyone's always like, we get, get it, Tristan. I'm like, no, it's important because if you can deal with someone um, in a meth induced psychosis at three in the morning, you can deal with any <laughs> C-suite <laughs> with, uh, with ridiculous demands and or a disgruntled developer sliding into your DMs uh, as well as award-winning customer support. Um, so I'm a director of community um, and a lot of people think that's just like touchy-feely and I'm like, no, um, I got into tech I got into tech. I graduated from Columbia with a master's and I was like, the best I can do with a master's from Columbia nonprofit business administration is $55,000. Absolutely not. So I said I was going to go into tech and bring my values around social work and, and all that with me. And um, I got in soft slabs. I recruited 118 people in one year, founded our DEI program with my boss, Anna Marie Gutierrez, scaled it around the globe. Um, but, but Marketing was always knocking on my door and two weeks after I joined they were like we want you and I said no 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 I made a promise one year with Anna Maria Gutierrez so I did that recruited 110 people in one year and then after I was done I went over into um, you know community I was doing a ton of things running the world's largest Linda media group uh, but I was really excited about I was really excited about the opportunity to rebrand and launch secret sauce um with sauce labs and you know um then i went on to test them and i founded a lot of the community programs from scratch um and then you know at the one year mark apparently everyone now is all about community and i'm like y'all <laughs> this has been going on for a lot longer before covid um but so now i run a team but my biggest passion, other than being a stage mom, think Chris Jenner meets ruthless talent agent for developers, engineers, and every part of the software delivery life cycle. The other thing I love is I love to bring equity and inclusion into how we do product innovation and software delivery. So I or a little back. Okay. Yeah. Did there's just a little static. Okay, there we go. Um, but what I also do is um, 
I love, love to create equitable spaces where anyone, whether you're a BA, a manual tester, an automation developer, developer, anyone, PO, CTO, anyone has a virtual seat at the table to share their feedback live with our product leaders and developers. I'm a firm believer in that. I've worked in organizations, and I will not name names, that have prioritized white men and CTOs at big enterprise companies and are making all the decisions about the product roadmap and they've never even run a, a freaking, I'm not cussing by the way, y'all, I'm very proud of myself. Um, they haven't run a single automated test and they're making decisions for the entire company and we're not giving those smaller startups that are not that are not layers of legacy code that are doing really cool things. We're not giving them a seat at the table. And I said after that first one, I was like, we're not doing that again. So I've always made not just in terms of celebrating customers, getting them to conferences and helping celebrate their leadership. My other passion is also, um, you know, bringing equity and inclusions with our Provar product group. So I'm the director of community at Provar, which is a team. And so my team, uh, we have a technical forum. Um, we have a program for customers to get out there. Um, we also have, you know, a meetup group because um, I love to I, just, I love to celebrate people. I love to celebrate people. Um, we have a lot of other programs. <laughs> You're getting me after a very long day. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, if there's one way to describe it, it's connecting. I love to connect people. I don't care if you're a customer. You don't need to be. It's just people. I love to celebrate people. And I also uh, having a, had a lisp myself in a speech impediment and a feather and drawl you couldn't feather understand you know and no 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 tino shade to anyone who does but two years of speech therapy helped me and so i really love to help people who've never done public speaking before get out in their conference i don't care who you yeah. are when you're there yeah and and the good thing is that um from these people that when they are really running the first uh Mm. open speech that they have in, in the conference the most of them mostly are very good and we first of all the just testing days we look at this um, uh, newcomers let's say in that way and um and um we support them and um for example one of them is alex slavedek for example in germany alex um when he um was there the first time 13 years ago she was very very little but uh, yeah. we saw, yeah, yeah, we saw. We can talk with her about that. This is amazing, and uh, we saw that she has, she has a, a big potential, and we um, were pushing her. And um, but we were, uh, we are not the reason. The reason is she because she's so good. See, we haven't uh, um, given her anything. She had everything. Okay, we just saw it and we help a little bit. But she's the one who's doing the work. We just. Uh, so I don't want to have credit for anything. She's doing all the things, yeah. And 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 I think this is amazing. And and there's a thing that that we uh, we need to do that. So um, going back to uh, going back to to the bars. Do you used to go to bars? I, I, I normally don't. Do you do you go to bars? Do I go to bars? <laughs> yeah. Bars to, to, yes. I don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so much fun. It's yeah. so much fun because <clears throat> you get to meet all these amazing people. I have never met a stranger. I've never met a stranger because I know everyone because I love everyone. I've never met a stranger. Never. And bars are just, it's, it's life. You know, this time on this planet is so short. And to isolate yourself, I mean, and granted, there's been a lockdown and all that. And so, like, I totally get it. Like, you know, triple vaxxed here. <laughs> I'm like, literally put it in my eyeball. That mean I could get out again. I was like, I'll do it. Um, no, I love, I love bars. You know, I think for me, I, I love drag queens. I love, I know. I know. love drag queens. You need, you need to come to the gel testing days. And um, I, I, you, should, you have to look for a picture of mine. As as an as a nurse, I already saw. It. Have you saw we my, my picture as a nurse? For a while, Jose. Yes, yes, yes. I see you. I see you. Can you tell me a little bit? Do you have a drag persona? I don't know. There's a name. 
You don't Sorry? know. We need, we need to get you backstory for your drag persona. You need to create a, I might have to become your drag mother. <laughs> Could be. I mean, I, I don't have, I mean, I, I'm, um, uh, I mean, um, if you look at the uh, years back to the judge testing days, I was always uh, dressed as a woman, and um, my my children now, my children, they they yeah. were a little bit scared because they were teenagers, and I said, I don't care because you know, yeah, Papa, but but you are a man. I said yes, but that had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. celebrating that, and and I'm coming from the Canary Island. We have an um, we have amazing drag queens there and uh, carnival and so on. So and but they don't know this culture, and mm. and that's the uh, the um, the difference. So we are now arriving the, the last part of this interview, and we have some questions that we are going to ask everyone. So, um, like I said, this format is called uh, Pepper's Bar. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there are the, the obligatory questions that you may answer. So. You can uh, answer shortly or longer as, as much as you want. So, what is your favorite drink? Um, Judy Bombay Sapphire Martini, slightly dirty, no olives with a twist. Okay. Do you it's have a special? <laughs> do you have special song that when you hear in a bar you just start dancing? Mm, well, yes, yes. Um, Recently, it's been Big Dick Energy by Lotto. Um, I love that song. And the remix with Khalid and Mariah Carey is mwah. Um, that's a new tune. Um, an older tune. I mean, okay, I'm going to be basic bitch here. And just I'm going to say um, Whitney Houston, I want to dance with someone. Like, that's just easy. That's easy. It's That's easy. my go-to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to say when we talk about dancing, okay, mm -hmm. have you ever seen Angie Jones dancing? You know that's my boo boo. I know, I know. Do, do, I, have you seen her dancing? Have you seen her dancing? I will just say this because I'm going to get in trouble with my Angie. If she watches this, she's gonna. She's, she's gonna crazy. Do. She's so crazy. She's so crazy dancing. This is so. I mean, I, she was dancing on, on, on the stage in the conference. And I said, "Oh my God, I cannot dance next to you because it's, I'm so bad." She's so good. She's so good. All I will say, and I agree. All I will say is, I took Angie Jones back at SauceCon in 2018, 2019, 2019 in Austin, and I took her out on was it fourth street tldr took her out to see some drag queens and my favorite part was the next day when she tried to show videos of us dancing in front of claude jones who's my other boo boo um back in his days in walmart labs he's moved on to bigger even exciting things and try to show videos of that yes yes and to to say that angie if you're watching this recording and I did, I did see her in Nolan's with her, with, with Johnny um, last year, but trust, please, I will dance off with Angie at any moment of the day. I get on the floor. I get on the floor. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Need, we, need, we, need, we need you on our party. So you are highly invited for the Agile Testing Days in US in a few days, and you are highly invited for Germany. You can come. You don't need to talk. You are just my guest. Okay, mm -hmm. invited. so I, I want to see you dancing. Well, I'm so right for that, by the way, because I'm gonna have to help you with your hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So, um, if you could choose who would be your favorite person to talk to at the bar, who could be someone that doesn't be one special? So, are from you the, from, from the business side? It could be also from, I don't know. So are you? Uh, oh, okay, I get it. So if I could talk just to one, person. yeah, or just to be in the <laughs> room, me. That sounds like your list. <laughs> in that order, um, I could talk to. Oh man, that's tough. 
it would either be Oprah or Brene Brown. Okay. Or Susan Cain, um, who is amazing. Um, it would be it would be a trifecta. Because you said I have to choose. And the quote card would be, I am got to choose. This is red bottom blood shoes. I will not. Um, I would have a circle with Oprah and Brene and Susan Cain. And we okay. would just key. We would just key key. Okay. I want to be there. I'm here. Susan <laughs> Cain has started following me on Twitter, and Brene Brown has liked my posts for her new book, Alice of the Heart. But Oprah and I still have not had some kind of social media interaction. So I'm coming for her next. Okay, that's good. So that's a tricky question now. So um, as you know, I am your bartender tonight. Okay. Correct. So uh, what is your confession to make? Oh, wow. Mm, okay. So when I was really, really, I was like, I've already told you a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> no worries. No secrets. <laughs> I don't know. Um, when I was really, really poor, I used to shoplift a lot when I was like homeless and I did it all the time and I was really good at it. Um, but you know, then you, <laughs> then you go back to the group homes and you don't do it anymore. Um, what's another confession? Cause I love this. I love this. Um, what's another confession? Um, Oh, that's good. You know, I'm thinking, I'm giving you, I'm giving you quite a few. What's a confession? Um, no, I'm going to have to come back to you on that one because I've already given you quite a few. Um, but I feel like that's there's good. not the top of my that's, yeah. that's good. That's good. That's good. That's um, good. What is the best way to end a conversation in the bar? Mm, with a hug. With a hug? Mm -hmm. Feel my heart. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Tristan. Como si Thanks abrazos. So abrazos. Abrazos. Un abrazo. Un abrazo. Un abrazo. Un abrazo y un beso. Un abrazo y beso. Claro, claro que sí. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. It was amazing. And um, yeah, hope to see you soon. Okay. Thank you for everything you do. Ciao, ciao. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.